Because Pentecostalism, also known as the Apostolic Movement, is a huge grown movement, it's taking over huge swathes of the Pentecostal charismatic third wave movement. And um, in, in South America and Asia in particular, um, you'll find that churches that were formerly Trinitarian are now becoming oneness. Um, that is, they deny the doctrine of the Trinity as pagan. They believe that Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they're very insistent in saying that God is only one person. Although, one of the problems with oneness is that um, you'll find that oneness pastors can't agree amongst themselves as to who Jesus is. They seem to have no um, common, agreeable definition of who God is, who Jesus is, what is the way of salvation. Um, even within oneness churches, you'll find that... Um, leaders of individual oneness churches can't agree on who Jesus is and who God is and what is the way of salvation. There's so many radical different views of oneness theology. I guess worldwide now they're probably approaching somewhere in the region of 30, 40, 50 million members. But what I find frightening is that here in Plymouth where I live, I can't speak about America, Canada, Brazil, I can't speak about the churches in those countries, I've never been there. But here in Plymouth I can assure you I can take you to a great number of evangelical churches here, which are supposedly Trinitarian, but in actual fact they teach oneness. Um, Plymouth Christian Centre is an Elam Pentecostal church, and I was told there two years ago that Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I made a complaint, and they threatened to throw me off the Alpha Course. I then spoke to the head of the Alpha Course next week, I said I didn't like um, the modalism, the oneness that was taught to me, that Jesus was the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The head of the Course um, uh, told me uh, I was wrong. The Trinity is true, but the Trinity is that Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I was told to shut up. I wrote to the pastor twice, he didn't reply. I then wrote to the head of the denomination worldwide, a man called John Glass, the head of the Elam Pentecostal Church. He said he'd look into it and get back to me, and he never did. So the problem we have is that oneness is taking over so-called Trinitarian churches. It's almost like vampirism, you know, you get bitten by Dracula, you get turned into a vampire yourself. Um, you can go to these evangelical churches and you visit again five or six years later, and now they're all oneness. They believe that Jesus is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Although at the same time, very strangely, um, some of these people will also teach tritheism, that God is three spirits, there's three thrones in heaven, uh, God is three beings, etc. It's, it's, it's a crazy belief, evangelical Christianity. Absolutely insane. Anyway, here is my argument. Firstly, the creator of the universe is Yahweh God, who creates, quote, all alone and, quote, by myself. Isaiah 44, 24. So let's be clear about this. The creator is Yahweh God. There are no angels who help Yahweh God in his creation. The Jehovah's Witness claimed that the archangel Michael helped uh, Jehovah to create is ridiculous because Yahweh God creates Isaiah 44, 24, all alone and by myself. Okay, now here's my million dollar question for one of the Pentecostals. If I had a million dollar question, if I had a million dollars, I would pay you a million dollars if anyone that's Pentecostal can answer this question for me in text. If God is one single person called Jesus, then how could this one single person who is called Jesus do two totally different contradictory things with regard to the creation? Let me read 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. The context is a contrast between idols and the true God. And, and at uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, we find that the Shema of Deuteronomy 6, 4 is quoted in the New Testament. And the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, it is applied to the Father and the Son. Because the Father and the Son are used here in contrast to the so-called gods, that is the idols, the false gods, of verses 1 to 5. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Yet for us there is only one God the Father, of whom are all things, and we for him and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. We have two Greek prepositions here, ek, which means out of, and die, which is the genitive, there's a linguistic possession. If I said the camera of Robert, okay, this camera is a linguistic genitive, it's the camera of Robert, it belongs to me. It doesn't mean it is me, okay, it means it's my property. Um, the glasses case of Robert, okay, you, you get the idea, it's a genitive. So you have ek, which in Greek means out of, and you have di, which is the genitive form of dia, which means through. So, and yet for us there is only one God the Father, ek, Greek preposition ek, out of, 
of whom are all things. So the Father is the source of the creation. And one Lord Jesus Christ, die, that's the Greek preposition, die, dear in the genitive sense, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Now, if God is one single person called Jesus, how can Jesus be both ek, the source of the creation, and he's also die, he is the one through whom the creation was made? It doesn't make any linguistic, logical sense. But uh, he could be one. Jesus could be ek, the source of the creation, out of whom the entire creation was made. Or Jesus Christ could be the one through whom um, the creation was made. But he can't be both. It doesn't make any logical sense. You can't both be the source of the creation and also the, the one through whom somebody else made the creation. It, it doesn't make any logical sense. You're one or the other. We find a parallel to this in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. It says God in verse 1, but it, in it, it means God the Father, because as we read in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it is God the Father who is the source of the creation. God who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So God the Father made the worlds through his Son. So if there's only one person, and this one person of God is called Jesus, and we know that no angel or demon or human being or, 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 or humanity was active in the creation, because Isaiah 44, 24 says, only Yahweh God is the creator, he creates, quote, all alone, and quote, by myself. Then how can Jesus Christ, who is one person, be the one out of whom the creation was made, and then he's also at the same time the one through whom somebody else made the creation. One as Pentecostals can't say, oh, well, this is the Father. The, the Father is the um, source of the creation, and the Son is the one through whom the creation was made, because that refutes the main oneness Pentecostal claim that the sonship, or the humanity, or the Son, as they call it, um, came into existence at Bethlehem. One as Pentecostals have to say there was no Son before Bethlehem, Otherwise, um, they would be Binitarians or Trinitarians. So you can't use the argument that, you know, the creation is from the Father through the Son. That's classical, that's classical Trinitarianism, which teaches God, God the Father is the sole source of the creation. He then creates through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because uh, Job 33.4 also talks about the Holy Spirit being active in creation. So they can't give that argument. What one as Pentecostals tend to do is they tend to use a straw man argument of misrepresenting the Trinity, misrepresenting the creed, as if Trinitarians believe that there's three separate creators. God the Father is, is, is the source of the creation, the Son in Trinitarian theology is the source of the creation, and the Holy Spirit is a third separate God, separate spirit, a separate source of the creation. Well, Trinitarians... Uh, educated Trinitarians don't believe that. I know that Billy Bob Joe, Pastor Billy Bob Joe, and there are millions of Pastor Billy Bob Joes across the world, they teach anything as the Trinity, because it seems that Trinitarians just make it up as they go along today. But the Trinitarians, the Trinitarianism of the creeds, the Athanasian Creed, 39 Articles of the Church of England, the Westminster Confession of Faith does not teach that. It doesn't teach that God is three separate spirits. It doesn't teach that God is, uh, there's three separate sources of the creation. It doesn't teach there's three separate thrones in heaven. These are straw man arguments invented by one as Pentecostal. So look, anyone can answer my question. If I had a million dollars, I'd give you a million dollars. I could write you an IOU for a million dollars, but I don't think I'm ever going to be a rich person. I'm a very poor person. But I'd happily write you an IOU for a million dollars if you can answer this one question. Please, if God is one person called Jesus, Mr. Oneness Pentecostal, whether you're a Oneness Pentecostal in the UPCI, United Pentecostal Church International, whether you're a Oneness Pentecostal in Bible Way, or the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, or whether you're a Oneness Pentecostal who calls himself a Trinitarian, but you go to an Elam Church, a Baptist Union Church, and believe me, there's many modalists in the Baptist Union here in the UK. It's a disgraceful, demonic wicked organization, the Baptist Union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Just answer this one question for me. If God is one person called Jesus, then how can this one Jesus, 
be both ek, the Greek preposition ek, the one out of whom the creation was made, and at the same time, this one person of God is also die. He's dear in the genitive sense, the one through whom somebody else made the creation. Could you please explain that for me? Thank you very much.